Good morning to all my friends and family and welcome to this episode of Jim's 5am Club where I'm going to continue to add episode after episode to my sub-series on all that I've learned from Anthony Robbins over the years. As you can see it's a an overcast Sydney day an overcast spring day here in Sydney but hopefully that cloud uh, that darkness can keep on pushing north because when I turn around here to the south the sky looks clear so hopefully we'll have a beautiful day one of the topics that I want to cover today whilst we have this magnificent ocean liner come in to dock up at the International Passenger Terminal, the Ovation of the Seas. I think it could be one of the biggest um, cruise liners, uh, especially the one of the ones that come into Sydney. Because as it edges in, it's going to take up the whole, <laughs> the whole of the area, the whole length of this uh, passenger terminal which I normally go up onto but today I've decided just to take a different vantage point to enjoy this special moment. When I was at UPW this year um, Anthony Robbins said something which I found very very profound. We were talking about the six human needs that people have. Uh, the first one being certainty, people needing certainty in their lives. The second one being people need variety in their lives. The third one was the need for significance, the need for title, the need for uh, respect. Uh, then the fourth one was uh, love and connection, uh, the fifth was growth and the last one was contribution. So six needs. Anthony Robbins uh, took a position that humans behave the way they behave in order to satisfy those six key human needs. And. Um, one of the things that he said, as I mentioned before, really stood out and made a, a significant sort of impact on me. It was quite profound. Where he says that men will die for significance. For some men, significance is so important to them that they are willing to die in order to achieve that human need and what immediately comes to mind is the many heroes that we have in our history and in our lives uh, young men who go to war young men who or older men or men in general who uh, uh, put their lives at risk in order to gift a better life to their significant others, their children, their families, their community, their country. And uh, it's quite understandable because what Anthony Robbins says in that session that we had is that depending on the needs that you have and the priority that you have them in will determine how you behave and how you react and respond and dance with your life, you know, with life in general. So what we're saying here is that if you have significance as your key human need, your key priority, what Anthony Robbins said was that if you knew people's first and second need and the priority and the weighting of each of those needs 
then you could pretty you could pretty well understand how they're going to behave, how they're going to react, and what values they're going to have, uh, because people are habitual in nature, and pretty predictable when you understand what drives them. So let's spend a little bit more time talking about significance because we did an exercise around the room where people got to weight and prioritize their current lives in terms of what was most important to them. And you'd be surprised at how many people had significance as one of their highest priorities. The reason why they do things is to get recognized and rewarded and respected. And the other thing that was high on the list was certainty. People wanted certainty in their lives and they also wanted significance. But what the big man said to everybody was that if you have certainty and significance as your key drivers in your decisions and your behaviours, you are in fact wiring yourself up for significant pain over a lifetime. So um, the key message from this exercise from UPW was for Anthony Robbins to talk to everybody and to um, show them how the decisions and the selections that they make, the priorities that they have are not necessarily the priorities that are going to get them the life that they desire. Because as we said, having certain things as your key priority is going to wire you for significant pain and once you go far enough down a particular path then it's really hard to turn back because you've established yourself people know pretty much who you are and it's really hard to change unless you make a, uh, a concerted effort and a deliberate effort, effort to change so I remember reading a wonderful uh, book summary on a book that was written by a couple who are professors and uh, the book is entitled Love and Respect and it delves a little bit deeper into love and into respect um, knowing very well that in terms of the human needs we've got love and connection at number four and we've got significance at number three and they're not in any particular order Anthony Robbins told us so there's no trick about that but uh, they are very very different needs and are different drivers in people's lives and in this book the couple who are uh, world leaders in uh, relationships and marriage and understanding the differences between men and women. What they say in this book and what their key message is that there are differences between men and women in terms of what they want and what they expect in relationships and as controversial as it may seem I'd imagine that there would be people who would find this offensive but uh, I'm 63 years of age I've lived a lifetime and I've seen a lot of relationships and I've hung out with a lot of men and also talked with a lot of women in my life what they say in their book is that women have as a higher priority and crave love whereas men are a little different men crave respect 
which once again ties back one of the beauties of going to UPW is you get to uh, join the dots and answer a number of questions that we've picked up over the years in our lives and I remember years ago um, reading a, a book a simple book but once again a book with profound messaging written by a fellow named uh, John Gray it was entitled Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus and that book also talked about the significant differences between men and women um, so much so the title of the book is that you know, men are from Mars and women are from Venus indicating and suggesting that the differences between men and women potentially are so vast that it's like we come from a different planet so Anthony Robbins talks about the, uh, the differences between men and women and uh, he's not shy about it what I love about Anthony Robbins is when he talks he's very very direct he doesn't uh, mince his words and he doesn't create confusion because some of the most important things for all of us is to have certainty in terms of communication and of course to have variety as well as we talk about but uh, Anthony Robbins as he mentioned that significance especially these days is so important to men that men will die for significance men will die for recognition men will die for title and you see a lot of people these days spend their whole lives just trying to prove that they are worthy, that they are significant, that they have the right postcode, they have the right job title. And it's quite sad actually, because in that pursuit, what they do, potentially do, is they destroy their lives, they destroy their relationships, they are egotistical, they are narcissists and they just create a, uh, a litany of problems everywhere they go because their life is all about here I am, I have arrived, uh, look at me, it's my way or the highway and this, of course, um, leads to uh, bigger uh, unresolved problems because they get to a point in their life and they look back and they see that they've achieved a lot of summits in their lives. They've reached a lot of peaks. But all of those summits, unfortunately, have been false summits summits that leave them unfulfilled, unhappy, empty, depressed, anxious and unloved. So where are we going with this? So what happens um, in the seminar UPW with Anthony Robbins is he asks people how to wait and to wait their current uh, human needs and then he asks people what would have to happen in order to live the life the perfect life G'day, mate. that you desire what would have to change to live a better life and this is where people have a turnaround this is where people have a profound transformation where they realize that the things that they've had as priorities in their lives are the things 
that have actually caused them the most grief and suffering. Because if you go through the human needs, you've got certainty, and by all means, we need a little certainty in our lives, but too much certainty um, creates problem because we live in uncertain times. Uh, anybody who has lived will know that certainty is fleeting. And if you spend too, tr too much time trying to control those around you and trying to control the results and the outcomes, you'll end up creating pain and suffering because everything is changing. You are changing, I am changing. Everything is changing around us. And in order to maintain perfection and to create that certainty that you desire, you're going to cause pain and suffering to those around you. And by the same token, if you want variety and too much variety in your life, then that too causes grief because others around you require you to be behaving and acting in a certain way to fulfill their need for certainty and you know so on and so forth so what we're saying is that you know, life is a bit of a dance and um, um, there is an opportunity at different times of people's lives where they can sit back and reflect and assess where they're up to, what they've done, and the problems and issues that those waitings and those priorities are continuing to cause them. So, towards the back end of this exercise, as I said before, Anthony Robbins asks people, you know, what have those priorities that you've had, what are those um, human needs, those human desires that have been driving you, cost you in your life in terms of growth, development, love and all of the other human needs. And it's amazing um, the impact that this exercise has on people because they realize that you know the drive for significance is actually destroying parts significant parts of their lives they're causing pain to themselves and they're causing pain to others around them and uh, towards the end when Anthony Robbins asked people what are your priorities now? If you wanted to live an ideal life, what would you change? How would you change it? And what impact would it have on your life? And the people, and the majority of people had significance and certainty as their driving human needs. And after the reflection, after the transformation people said that love and connection were or should be their higher priority as well as growth and contribution so we've gone from being selfish wanting things to be certain wanting variety wanting significance to being selfless where people want or, or crave for a change so that things are more about connection, about love, about growth and about contribution. Because what Anthony Robbins does is he reveals to people that because he interacts with millions of people throughout the world he has a circle of uh, friends who are billionaires. Um, he has a number of programs 
where he gets lots of details and he talks to lots of people and he finds out uh, the issues that are, have a common thread throughout society and not only Western society but different societies. So he's able to take those common elements, those common pain points and talk about them and he's able to identify that there are common problems amongst men, amongst women, amongst religions, amongst different societies, amongst rich and poor. And he also says that if you are fulfilled, if you are content with your life, then you are the richest person in the world. You've got riches which far exceed the riches of the billionaires, the celebrities, and all of the famous people, the kings and queens that he's ever come across. Because everybody has problems. Everybody has challenges. Everybody's trying to fulfill their lives, not knowing quite how to fulfill it. Because a lot of the times they are caught up in the BS, in the significance, in the certainty, in the variety, when the, the, the actual truth and the actual uh, secret to living a better life is through giving, is through being selfless, is through being a partner with God in his creation, by being a servant as opposed to being a master, by uh, living a life and doing things that are God-pleasing, by serving God, by glorifying God with all your heart, mind and soul, and secondly, by loving your neighbour, by being unconditional in your love to your family, unconditional in the love for yourself, being non-judgmental, spending more time focusing on your own growth and development and rather than focusing on what you can change and who you can fix. So some key messages from today's vlog on all that I've learned from Anthony Robbins over the years and as we said by changing by recalibrating your basic human needs can have a dramatic impact on the fulfillment that you will gain in your life. And it's quite liberating to spend your time and to invest your time in doing the things that are going to give you the gift of, uh, of uh, contentment. Anyway, we've got the Ovation of the Seas docked up, as you can see there, and it's taken the full length of the Overseas Passenger Terminal. I was up there the other day and I was dwarfed by this massive passenger liner, and it is quite beautiful, uh, very special. I think it'll be here for the day, and around about four o'clock or five o'clock, it'll take off. So if anybody is in the city at that time, you're probably better off coming down here and going to the opera bar across the bay there and just watching this ship uh, pirouette and head back out to the uh, Pacific Ocean and go on a little cruise and it'll be probably be back here next week sometime. So I think I'll leave it there. So thank you very much for joining me on this episode. Um, I absolutely love this time of the morning. I love getting up. I love coming down to the city a little bit earlier and then heading off to work, of course. But I commence the day by doing something that I love. I commence the day by reaffirming and uh, 
and delivering some of the things that I've learned and what works for me. In order to learn something, I need to teach it. And it's one of those powerful things that uh, I wish I did a lot of it a lot earlier in my life. But as we learn, it's never too late to grow, develop, to contribute. And it's not about significance, because if it was about significance, I would have stopped it a long time ago. I don't have too many followers. I don't get too many likes. I don't get too many views. But guess what? That doesn't drive me. That doesn't worry me. Um, because as I say, the things that drive me is doing it in order to contribute to those who may have a need to, uh, to listen and to learn from the great man, Anthony Robbins. And I'm just living, learning and passing it on taking the gifts of, of what I've picked up over time, what I've learned, because learning is the art of attaching the unknown to the known. And the more you know, the more you're capable of knowing, the more you learn, you're capable of learning, and the more you do, the more you're capable of doing. So we're gonna use it, else we'll lose it. And that's one of the things that I try and do is to continue to uh, practice and to talk about and to hopefully apply the learnings so that we can uh, figure ourselves out first and also figure out those around us. And by taking these tools, by taking the skills, the inventory of tricks, the life hacks that we have, then we can use that to make our lives better and other people's lives better as well through the gift of giving and being there for others as opposed to just being selfish in what we do and what we have. Because at the end of the day, God gives us gifts. He gives us skills. He gives us wealth. He gives us networks in order to leverage those, to use those, to help others, rather than to selfishly use those for our own needs. By all means, you need to be selfish when you're young so that you can build your skills, that you can understand and follow your calling. But once you get to a certain point, then you need to start giving back rather than taking in order to live a uh, content and a fulfilled existence. So take care everybody, yasas, have a great rest of the day. And I look forward to coming to you again from a different place, from a different, with a different message of empowerment where we can learn something, apply it as we mentioned before, and basically kick off the day uh, on a positive and a productive note. I'll be heading up to Nelson Bay this weekend, hopefully, and I'll use the backdrop of the beautiful beaches and uh, mountains there to deliver further blogs on this channel. So stay tuned and pass the message around. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed and let your family and friends know that this service, this free service, is available for each and every one of us to, uh, to use. Take care, yasas, and bye for now. What I forgot to mention before was uh, from this book, Love and Respect, what the author said was because of these differences or apparent differences between men and women, not all men and not all women, uh, it's important to uh, craft your words and your communication to your significant other or to others in your life in order to get the best outcomes you can possibly get. So what 
they said in this book and I can attest to this as well because I'm not a person who wants to be loved by all means um, like most men that I know of my generation um, what is more important to me um, is to be respected for uh, who I am and what I do uh, so if anybody wants to connect with me through love um, I, I reckon that they're probably wasting wasting their time and what the author said here is that when you're talking to a man you're probably better off saying rather than I love you is to say what I respect most about you is A, B and C and for men when they're talking to women to their significant other to commence the uh, conversation with what I love most about you is A, B and C because by using these words what you're do doing is you're triggering um, you're triggering and connecting with their human need or their highest form potentially of human need and I'm not saying that there are women who don't have significance as a higher human need but what I'm saying is that on in general and this is something that we need to spend some time assessing reflecting on in order to know ourselves and to know others as to whether or not love or respect is something that they crave and if it's if it's respect then you need to give them respect if it's love then you talk about love but you don't talk about love to somebody who craves respect and you don't talk about respect to somebody who craves love it's just a simple message but it can have some profound first second and third level consequences is what I'm getting at and by understanding these little insignificant or what appear to be insignificant nuances what Anthony Robbins says and what the authors of these books say you can have some major major breakthroughs in terms of connection uh, with other parties so uh, we need to be sensitive we need to tread cautiously and we need to understand that there are different things that um, influence different people and to talk their language and to meet them where they are and to talk to them on their terms in order to connect with them and to build a relationship anyway I thought I'd add that to the video otherwise I felt that uh, if I didn't add it to the video I would have left off something which was fairly important and significant thank you very much for listening to me we'll chat again soon bye for now